What's up, y'all? It's Shuffle. Welcome back to the vanilla cast of Hero Guides for Darkest Dungeon 1. This guide is going to cover Abomination, who is a very unique hero for sure, and we'll go through what makes him good, what makes him bad, how to play him, break down all of his abilities, his gear, and a couple team suggestions to help get you started. I want to give a personal, special, super mega thank you to Aloxist, who is in fact my first YouTube member, paid sub thing, whatever the hell they're called. It's very awesome, and I cannot thank you enough for the support. And if you want to become a member or interact with the video in any way, just scroll down a little bit, you'll see the join button, you'll see the like button, which you should hit, you'll see the bell, which you should hit, you'll see a comment where you should just type whatever random thought comes into your head as long as it doesn't get auto flagged and then share the video with someone who may or may not care because they don't play darkest dungeon starting off what is abomination good at he is a very fast unit he has base 9 speed which is the second highest in the game behind grave robber and the speed is very good because it allows him to go ahead of the enemy backline and stun that very valuable rank 3 target or if you're trying to stall in the later end of the fight, he can go very early in the round and stress heal himself. It is never bad to have speed in this game. Going first is always better than going second, and Abomination is very good at doing that. Next strength, he is very flexible. He can go into the mid ranks of your party very comfortably. He prefers rank 2 out of all the ranks because that's where he gets access to pretty much everything. But you can make him work in 3 or in 1, he just sucks in 4. And what's really nice about Abomination is that you can use him either as a control, kind of like midline tank, where you can use his nice HP stat and his stun, along with his self heal in order to just disrupt the enemy and take some hits. And then if you want to turn on the damage, you just transform and you start slamming things for a ton of damage because he has a very high damage stat. His third greatest benefit is his stress heal absolution. Stress damage is way more important in this game than HP damage. And even though he can heal a bit of HP by using the skill, he can heal a ton of stress. And since it can heal HP, it can actually crit. And when you crit heal, you also relieve more stress which means that Abomination has a lot of good and cool stuff going on. For those avid viewers of Shuffle FM, I set a lot of strengths, and I also made a video a couple years back saying that Abomination was the worst character. How do we reconcile this? Well, first of all, just because someone is quote unquote the worst or low tier or whatever, doesn't mean they're bad. Every hero in this game is very strong, especially if played correctly, and Abomination is no different. With that said, he does have some notable drawbacks. The first is planning. Planning is an essential part of Darkest Dungeon. You have to know where you're going, the teammates you want to bring, what the monsters can do. Obviously, it's much harder when you're new, but after a few runs, hopefully start putting it together. And since Abomination is a very complex character, since he has access to all of his skills at the same time, you have to not only understand what the enemies are capable of, you have to understand when to transform, and you have to understand how to build a solid team to accommodate Abomination if you're going to transform consistently. And that's not even going into how you trinket this character, which we'll talk about in a couple seconds. His next major weakness is that transforming can be a tempo loss. Tempo is a term that refers to momentum or control that you have over the battle. In between his really good speed and stun, Abomination is good at controlling the tempo of the fight However, if you are transforming quite often, that means that someone has to stress heal. No matter which way you slice it, Abomination does put a little bit of extra stress on the party, so either someone has to sink turns into healing that, Abomination has to spend turns stalling to heal it, you have to spend other resources like Curio or Respite Points to heal it, and in the grand scheme of things, it's not too difficult to work around, but for newer players, this can actually be very difficult. His final weakness is that his trinket options are not that great unless you have Color of Madness. This is the closest we're getting to pay to win for a character outside of Shieldbreaker. And the reason is that Abomination's best trinket that solves pretty much any issue he has is from Color of Madness and that is Broken Key which we'll talk about later. If you're just trying to do trinkets for human form. It's pretty easy to do if you're just trying to do it for beast form. Pretty easy to do if you're trying to do a hybrid thing. Pretty tough to pull off without broken key. Now let's talk about how to play this character. 
It seems overwhelming because he has seven buttons, he has a unique transform mechanic, he can do a bunch of stuff, so how do you put it all together? It's a bit simpler than you may think, and we'll start with the two forms that he has. The first is the human form. This is the one where he can use manacles, which is his stun, beast bile, which is his blight attack, and absolution. Playing him in human form is very, very easy, which is what I would recommend most people do for the majority of their time with this character, just because it's straightforward, it's effective, it requires less planning on your part, and it's just good. But hey, you don't care about that. You're like, Chef, I want to know how to transform. I want to turn into the were goat and just start hitting slam and rage and rake and destroying everything. And you definitely can. Even if you don't have a dedicated stress healer for Abomination, you can still transform. It's not like off the table. What you have to do is wait to transform until you need the immediate damage. When Abomination transforms, he gets a nice speed boost as well as damage and a little bit of HP, so he gets a lot of things all at once. And your primary purpose when you transform is to try and end the fight. Either it's something you can't stun or it's something you weren't ready for, like Collector shows up, you don't get to stun him and he summons the heads. Or you're fighting Shambler or any other boss in the game, usually you're probably going to transform at some point. So the TLDR of transformation is don't do it unless you have to, right? Have a goal in mind when you do it, so you're not just putting undue stress on your party or a situation where you're just transforming more for fun than for any other reason. However, the rule of fun is always the top rule, so if you want to transform every single fight and just blast stuff, go ahead. Final tip on how to play Abomination is to just make sure that you can stress heal, either with Absolution or with someone on the team. As cool and fun as transforming is, as I said before, it applies a lot of stress to your team, and that's why I called it a tempo loss earlier in the video. Before we talk about Abomination's skills and trinkets and stuff, we'll talk about some quirks that are good for him. Like pretty much any hero in the game, accuracy is really good, as well as speed and then something defensive or steady for reduced stress. The easiest example, as I said, natural swing, just plus five accuracy at all times, really good for this character and then you have you know some like quick reflexes luminous if you have color of madness bonus speed is always good and this is probably the one i put the most work into on this file anyway so you see here right the same consistent idea we get more stress healing or stress resist more speed and stuff like that now the meat and potatoes of how the character works we'll talk about his skills and actually his skills individually aren't complex really in any way it's just the fact that he has essentially two stances two forms or whatever and he can pick whichever one he wants to use at that moment and transform is a bunch of text right the rest of these are pretty small overall and easy to understand but transform itself is where you have to understand this character and something before i get started too is when i said his base damage is really good this is the second highest in the game this is behind leper but ahead of crusader and hellion or considered bruisers. So when he transforms, as you see here, he gets bonus speed, blight resist, which doesn't come into play that often, yet a ton of bonus damage, and his crit bonus is more damage, like more flat damage, or percentage, I should say. So this character can hit like a freaking truck if he needs to. And then you have a little bit of healing when you transform, just so you don't immediately die and stuff. And then as you see at the bottom, when you transform, other heroes get stress, and then when you shift back to human mode, they lose some stress. That is the thing you need to consider or mitigate or even ignore if you're going to play this character. Because his next skill, Manacles, is really what you're going to be pressing a lot of the time. If you're going to you know, play him as I'm going to suggest anyway. Because stuns are good. Stuns always win unless it can't be stunned. And this is a pretty good stun. All things considered, it's got great accuracy, it's got decent crit, it's only minus 60% damage, but he has like the second highest damage stat in the game, so it actually hits pretty hard. And then his stun chance is a bit lower, so he needs trinkets, which we'll talk about later. And we have Beast Vile, this is a cleave AoE, however you call it, that hits the middle two ranks, it blights, and it debuffs enemy blight resist. Doesn't usually come into play too often, but this is pretty nice for other characters with blight synergy either shield breaker 
like Doctor Who deal blank. Grave Robber gets bonus damage against Bladed Targets, so those two are really good together. And otherwise, it's just decent damage. The rank one of this sucks, and then it scales okay later, but it scales awkwardly. This move isn't one you're usually hitting, but it's there. Next we have Absolution, and this is the butter of the character. Whatever you consider the bread, if you like transforming, that's the bread. Absolution's the butter. If you like to hit manacles, Absolution is still the butter, even though that's the bread. I don't know why I said that, but this move is really good because stress damage is way more important than HP. And since it heals HP, it has a 12% chance to crit at any time to heal not only more HP, but an extra bit of stress. It's, I think it's plus four, so he can heal 14 with this. The critical hit chance for a heal cannot be modified. It's always 12, unless it's an AoE. In that case, it's, I believe, five. So that's Divine Grace, no comfort. And then we go to the transform skills. Rake is pretty good on anything that spawns a lot of extra units. So there are a couple fights in the game that spawn units repeatedly. This is pretty good for that. And Rake is a move that when you use it, since it has a negative damage mod on the first hit, you want to make sure that you're going to hit this pretty much every turn to keep the bonus up because it doesn't pay off until a couple rounds later. But if you need to keep some adds down in the front, like Clapper Claws, this will do it by itself in most cases, and it's pretty good. And we have Rage. Rage can hit rank 3. It's pretty much Crush, but Transform version, and hits hard, mediocre accuracy, actually on the lower side at 105, but huge crit, so pretty good. Slam is a travesty. The debuffs are pretty nice, but the accuracy is crap. The knockback, too, is okay. But the thing that really hurts this move is that he can't use it out of rank 4. This is changed in Butcher's Circus, but in Vanilla, it's not. And so, the character does need to have a weakness, so rank 4 is his weakness, but in a perfect world, you could transform in rank 4, and then you can slam to get up to 3 and at least actually start doing stuff. And then one final important thing to talk about with transform. It says uses per battle. That means that you can transform into beast, and then transform back into human each battle. So you only actually get one beast mode, unless you use something, I think the ethereal dust or shard dust or whatever it's called, I think that will uh, also let you do it again, but it has risks. Final thing to note with transform is that if you hit 100 stress and you're transformed and you afflict, abomination will go back to human mode. This is kind of backwards how you would probably think it is. You know, it's like, oh, he gets upset and you know afflicted so he just loses control but he actually regains all control because i think the devs probably thought it would be a little mean to leave you in beast form but if you virtue at 100 stress he actually stays in beast form and that is super good very rare but if it does happen pretty cool otherwise transform as i said before use sparingly use it to win when you need to all right, next up are camp skills. First one is anger management. This one is super, super, super good. It heals 10, well, it's good. It's not like amazing, but it is good. It heals 10 stress off the rest of your party and it gives him 20 stress, which late game, that's just two hits of absolution. You know, this, this is pretty easy to offset later on. So even early, it's decent enough to offset, but it's really nice. The three point stress heal for the party, besides abomination, never bad to have. Psych up gives him bonus damage, and so pretty much if you're going to transform and destroy a boss, this is when you hit Psych up. And the stress on religious stuff, the religious characters currently are Crusader, I say currently like they're going to change, but Crusader, Vestal, Leper, even though people don't think of him as religious, he's like religious adjacent, and then Flagellants. And for those wondering, in the past, like six years ago, Abomination could not pair with religious units. Now he can, that has changed. Next skill, the quickening, four speed for four battles. Sure, he's already really fast, so you don't oftentimes need this, but it's still good. Like there, there are plenty of times where this is really nice to have, especially if you're trying to do, again, like a boss killer thing. So if you wanna do some kind of hyper carry abomination in its psych up and quickening, just to get him, you know, ready to go and start hitting stuff. And I didn't realize that Abomination was the king of three-point 
Camp skills. And his final one is Eldritch Blood. This one is actually pretty bad because you get, you know, 40 bleed, 40 blight, 40 disease at the cost of 20 stress. The 20 stress doesn't matter that much unless you transform. But really what makes this not super good is that this is essentially holy water for three respite points, which are way more impactful. And a lot of the times when you're in an area, you don't usually run into both of these. You don't run into blight and bleed consistently in the same area. You can't like they do appear in areas together, but it's usually one or the other in most cases. Now we get two abominations trinkets. The first one he has, I don't even have in my box. That's how bad it is. And that is lock of patience. It's just plus 10 virtue chance. That's his common one. Garbage. Sell it every time you find it. Protective padlock can be good. If you have nothing else, 15 prods, not bad. He's already super fast. That one's really nice. Padlock of Transference is pretty much the one you want to get for this character because, in my opinion, human mode is his best mode, and you get 20 stun chance, 20 blight chance with no downside, and that's really nice to have. So if you plan to use Human Abomination a lot, then definitely hit this. Plus, green trinkets aren't too rare, so you should be able to find this relatively early enough. Then we have Lock of Fury. This isn't even bad on human a bomb like just 10 percent extra damage is 10 percent extra damage you know it's a point or two in certain cases and then when you transform it's a lot of extra damage and then also you get the three speed and then you lose some hp which he has really good hp already so it doesn't really matter this is a pretty good one to have too restraining padlock this is pretty much going into like trap territory right so whenever you transform this takes off like, where is it? So instead of eight, it should be either minus four or it might be minus three. And you might be going, Chef, well, you know, if it's like minus four, and so when I transform, I deal four stress to the party and I transform back, I heal two of it off. So it's like a net two stress. Isn't that super good? I mean, in that like very tight vacuum, it is pretty good. But you also have to understand you only get two trinket slots. Trinkets are super important for a character and how they perform. Do I want to dedicate an entire trinket slot to knocking off a few stress points in three or four fights max oftentimes of the dungeon? No, I don't. So really you want this to be pretty much anything else. Never hunt for this trinket, sell it when you get it. It's worth a lot of money, you know, $37.50 pretty good price it's i mean if you have absolutely nothing else put it on if you don't want to sell it but it's really not good let me come to his crimson court set which is actually pretty good individually like the individual piece of this are very good but the combined effect is not which is a bit weird so when you have it actually you can put this on rank 2 abomination or rank 3 or whatever and just get all this stuff too which is pretty cool because you know Extra damage on range skills, that's your spit and your chains. Extra crit, that helps the, the effect stick. So, like, you get better stun chance, plus 20%. Better blight chance, plus 20% when you crit something. You know, a little basic mechanical stuff there. And the shroud, minus 15% stress, plus 10 dodge. That's pretty good. Honestly, these individually are pretty good. But if you want to use them the way they're intended, where you put them on... You do some manacles, you spit some some bile, then you transform, slam into rank one, and start doing stuff. Because you can't use those moves in human form in rank one. And then you get plus 20% bonus damage. Like, it's, it's okay, but just... A lot of the times, the situations where you want to transform, you want to transform, like, immediately. You know, there's no point to sitting in human form for a long time, then shifting or whatever. I'm sure someone's got a story about how it's good and covers bases and stuff like that. But honestly, one of the things this character really needs, especially if he transforms, is accuracy. And this gives you none. So that's why I say it's better individually than together. And next, we come to the thing that fixes all of the issues the character has. Broken key. So you want to do some kind of hybrid playstyle where you transform sometimes, do a lot of human form and stuff broken key there's all your accuracy that you've ever needed there's a bunch of stun chance that you've ever needed 
and you only get 10% stress as the downside. And I believe this is the cheapest trinket from the crystal shop at like 35 shards. And if memory serves, they kind of balanced Abomination around this where they lowered his base stun chance when Color of Madness came out and then put this trinket in the game. So uh, kind of sucks to have it work that way. But if you have Color of Madness, only $5 goes on sale on, uh, constantly. Get Broken Key. And then that fixes the character. To wrap up the video, I've got two different teams to show you. One that you can use pretty much whenever you want. And then another that only starts to shine mid and late game. And the first one is the one you can just plug and play wherever. This frontliner can be whoever. I just put Hellion because, you know, Hellion and Derp exist. And so we have pretty standard setup for Hellion. We've got the bleed skills and a stun and a swan. And then pretty easily attainable trinkets. The hairpin comes from the cove and bleed pen is pretty just common overall. And then we have abomination. So I'm trying to, you know, show off some low level gear just to, you know, if you need to get started with something, you know what to look for. As I said, transference really good. And then we have archer's ring. But also if you have something like reckless charm, this could be good too, because it's just flat accuracy. This is actually better. But reckless charm only comes from the wheel, bit harder to find. So if you have this and, you know, like a stun thing, this can even be Dazzling Charm, really though, like this. And there you go. You just start hitting stuff with stun and it's good. Life's good. We have Jester. Obviously the skills up here, uh, you can swap stuff around as you, as you need to, but really the important ones are Ballad and Tune. Ballad just to help everyone get a little extra crit speed, you know, get out ahead of the enemy and crit stress heal passively so that's pretty nice too and then you have a stress heal if you need it but otherwise bleed just for you know consistent damage and then for trinkets lucky dice pretty common early and then barrison's head you can find this in a secret room if you bring a key secret rooms only appear in medium and long missions then finally we have plague doctor who pretty much goes into any team she wants because she's that strong but for Plague Doctor, this is the control support, you know, blight setup. We have the blight attacks, blinding gas, and medicine. And then as far as trinkets go, Speedstone, pretty common low level trinket. And then Blastos File, you can get any orange trinket to drop from a boss, like a, a boss mission. You just have to wait till it shows up. So BV, this trinket is one of like the top three to look for. So again, may seem hard to find but you know if you follow my advice and the advice of a lot of other people then you'll probably find this at some point second team i'm going to propose here is as i said before pretty good mid to late game and that's because Houndmaster starts to shine with cry havoc but that's the other thing too with what i'm going to show you is that since i am considering this mid and late game and stuff the trinket power level is going to go up a bit because most of these are acquirable by, you know, when your characters are starting to hit three and four and five all together. So you might get all these or most of these. So <clears throat> it's the thing behind it. And then we have Occultist starting off. I put him up front. It's not a, it's not something to be confused about. Frontline Occultist is in fact the best Occultist. All Occultists are cool, but the Frontline one is the best. I am. Oh, and with Occultist, we have Weakening Curse, you know, just to lower the damage coming in, get rid of some protection for our other damage dealers. A heal because it's better than nothing. Then we have Hex to mark targets for other people or lower dodge and stuff. And then Hands from the Abyss, you just spam the hell out of this. Or any other turn, you don't need to do something else. Trinkets, any kind of stun support, obviously Demon's Cauldron is the best. Again, look for this from a boss. Feather Crystal, probably the hardest one to find out of these. Blue Trinkets are about the rarest you can find just because of how they, they spawn and all that. And so with Feather Crystal, it's good. You know, it's a great trinket. And if you can find it, great. If not, then any other form of speed will do. Then we have Bounty Hunter. So Bounty Hunter is a bit tougher to gear out here because you can run... A combination of stuff. You can either run the mark if you want to, you know, mark targets for Houndmaster, get rid of protection from the enemy. You can use mark for death for that. 
But this is the first one you take off. And if you take it off, it's going to go to finish him instead. Otherwise, you got to collect bounty because sometimes you mark something and then you just ax it and blow it up. You have both stuns because more stuns are better than no stuns. So we have flashbang and uppercut. And the reason we have both is because sometimes we're going to play the team like this and other times abomination transforms it's slam and then bounty hunter loses uppercut but you still have flashbang for trinkets hunter's talent is the best thing bh has if you want to deal with the food consumed downside unequip the trinket anytime food pops up if there's a hunger check don't hit anything just open his character sheet take off the trinket the food count goes down if you're camping take it off the food count goes down so you can play around this easily enough and then stun amulet is slightly better than dazzling charm depending on who you ask you know that minus four dodge does matter but the 20 percent stun resist is pretty good too and then we have abomination it's access to everything but i'm playing this under the assumption that you want to transform a lot that's why i said it's good mid to late game and so if you're going to transform consistently we can run lock of fury for damage and speed then we can run surgical gloves which come from the warrens and realistically have no downside you know those those percentages on those resists are not impactful in any way shape or form but you get some accuracy and crits which is pretty cool and finally we have houndmaster houndmaster is a bit flexible you can swap a few of the moves around and get the guard the self heal stuff like that if you really want to and as far as gear goes, actually, no, we got to talk about the skills first. So I do recommend keeping Hounds Rush just for the reach in rank four. I do recommend keeping Cry Havoc later because the more this ranks up, the better it gets because the percentage chance to stress heal the party goes up. And so that way it's more efficient to manage the transform stress because you're stress healing everyone consistently instead of doing like two points of stress healing on like half of them, you know? So this can still low roll, but it's it's pretty rare for that to happen. Other than that, like I said, these two middle skills, negotiable, but this is probably how I'd run it out of the box, depending on where I'm going. And then for trinkets, Steady Bracer for the accuracy, Ancestor's Map, super duper good. Get it from the Shambler's Altar if you're lucky. And yeah. So level three, level four, up to six. This is when this party kind of takes off. Otherwise, you know, probably better off using something easier to pilot, focusing on human form. All right, all well, that's going to do it for the video. Thanks for watching. Really glad to get back into the DD1 Hero Guides. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you're thinking down below in the comments. And next up is, I believe, Highwayman, finally. Or it might be Hellion. I have to double check. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.